Hello. Um, I'm here to give my thoughts on uh, The Last Jedi, Star Wars Episode 7, um, or 8, actually. Not 7, I've already talked about that. Not in this series, but I made a video, I made a few videos, one with my initial reaction, and then, and then just uh, a video about how I wasn't fond of it, and I addressed some of the criticisms that the film had, that so many people shared, myself included, and, uh, you know, I wrote them down, I thought about them, I thought about how valid they were, and, you know, very valid, um, similar stuff here, um, you know, this probably is the most polarizing Star Wars I Seen, I've seen various reviews. Uh, I mean, I've already made my judgment of it. Um, it was. It, I watched it, and then I watched it again with my siblings. I watched it with my mother as well. Um, I've already addressed that. How it's like a, every year. It's like a, every time there's a Star Wars movie, it was like a tradition for my mom and I to go and see Star Wars together. So that happened uh, both times. So she went with my uh, brother-in-law and brother to see uh, Star Wars. But um, yeah, um, there's some things I'm going to talk about. But I have a very, uh, very particularly um, some annoyance with. Um, I have some bullet points. I mean, I'm missing some of them, but there's a lot of, there's various things in this, um, that, yeah, I, you know, upon f f thinking about it, after seeing it, and seeing it twice, you know, I, I had my first viewing with that soak in, and I didn't do a little, uh, a video about it, just talking about it. So, um, also, yes, there will be spoilers here. Uh, spoiler alert, you know. So if you haven't seen it at all at this point, and you have a desire to, uh, just letting you know, there will be spoilers. Um, but, yeah, uh, I have... <clears throat> I don't want to make another video of this, because... I made two of the Force Awakens, and I felt like I probably should have just made one. It shouldn't have been my initial thoughts one. Uh, it probably should have been some time, and then, and then I'd come back and talk about it. Because at that movie, I initially thought that was fine. But a part of that was me wanting to enjoy it, thinking it was good. Thinking, you know, George Luke, you know, uh, Disney could handle it, and make a good story and all that, and, uh, very much a reboot of episode four, and this film is a reboot of, you know, five, um, uh, many similarities, not just of that film, but of four and six as well, um, so I have, uh, another list here. So, uh, yeah, I think it's obvious. I mean, from the trailers, you know, those, like, big at, -AT looking walkers, you know, they, on that, which is a salt planet and not a snow planet, um, you know, that, uh, you know, that's very Empire-esque, the training with Luke and... Ray is very much like Luke and Yoda on Dagobah. Um, uh, Kylo Ren talking to Snoke is a bit similar to that of 
Vader talking to the Emperor with the hologram, but this time it's not a hologram. I guess spoilers are kind of in effect now. Uh, I don't do very well doing that. Um, I'm pretty sure you, if you've seen me, you know that, but yeah. Some spoilers here, um, I guess, at this point. Um, you know, that's Empire. Um, there's a, yeah, I'll just get into this as we go. So one thing is, um, aside from the original trilogy similarities, which I might, I quite possibly will get into as we discuss some of this stuff. Um, but one thing is Ray. She is still powerful with the Force, but the thing is, we don't know why. Because her parents are a bunch of nobodies. She, in fact, is nobody. So. How does she have the Force? Why is she so good at everything? And just like that, despite like a week or so before, she did not at all believe in the Force. She did not believe Luke Skywalker was even a real figure to her. They were all you know, just a bunch of stories, legends, fables, whatever. Basically, it never happened. Just stuff you tell kids uh, for an interesting and it's an inspiring story you tell before bed. Um, that's what I took away from that from The Force Awakens, how she just didn't really know about the Force, she didn't know about Luke, the Jedi, all, the, all of that. She didn't know. It seemed like she just thought it was like, you know, uh, a bunch of stories. It never happened. And she addresses something in the movie how she's always had the, this thing in her and she doesn't know what it is. Um, uh, meanwhile, that was never really seemed to addre be addressed at all at any point during The Force Awakens. You know? uh, and I said, in a, I believe I said in a video I made back then, or like the last year, about the criticisms though. They could have. They should have had like a sentence, or so, or two of her, like sensing something. Like sensing, they're, like Tie Fighters are coming. Or they're being followed or whatever. Just as she should have probably had a friend to talk about them flying stuff to help with her being a good pilot when she flies a Melon Falcon. But, you know, still, stuff like that that should and probably could be addressed in 8, that wasn't in 7, it's not at all talked about. It's not mentioned, except she's a nobody, but how or, and or why she is able to use the Force, especially so fast, without having training at all, we don't know. It just happened. Kylo Ren is still whiny and not threatening. Uh, he takes off that mask because Snoke makes him in the beginning. He tells him to take off that ridiculous thing. And he basically says he's not Darth Vader, despite being since he much power in him and all that. Uh, okay, whatever. Um, another thing is Poe. Poe Dameron, you know, he's featured a lot more in this film. Uh, he uh, is very much, uh, you know, the stuff that happens with him, the character, he conflicts with uh, Lauren Dern's character. I can't remember her name at all. I can't really remember it off the top of my head. And she has, like, purple hair because why not? But, uh, yeah, basically, Laura Dern is apparently, her character's, like, so perfect, and I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm doing. I'm taking command, because Leia 
stuff happened to Leia. Um, but basically, Laura Dern is like a, a bitch, essentially. Uh, that's the best I can describe it. Um, she feels like she's like a big know-it-all, despite many of her decisions. It's like... Because the thing is, she has a plan. She's got this plan, and the thing that makes her like a bitch and annoying is she has this plan, and you know, Poe is acting reckless at the beginning, firing on all this stuff. All, all, all these, the, not, not this, all this stuff. Destroying all the uh, guns on this big, like, Star Destroyer ship. And there's all these reinforcements, and very few came back. It was all Poe's fault because Leia told him to come back, but he wanted to take it all out. And because of that, he gets to move from commander to captain. Well, basically, she thinks, oh, because you got. Oh, you're, you're, uh, uh, Leia demoted you and this and that. And it's like, okay, well. Who cares? He asks for her to know what her plan is, and she's not telling him. I mean, why wouldn't you tell. Him. Why wouldn't you tell anybody? Why are you keeping what you're going to do a complete secret? I mean, that doesn't make sense in a military thing. Military situation, because the thing is, they're all getting shot at, and they... Like, the whole resistance is, like, on this big ship. Because it picks up right after The Force Awakens, and they're all getting... Loaded up to leave, despite, you know, for. We don't know why. All of a sudden, the First Order is there, they just are. It's like, okay, well. There's no little time. You can't spend some time with everybody on the ground. We, we need to leave right away. Okay, well. Then, you know, she. So all that happens, and one thing is, um, I'll get into more of the Laura Dern's character, but, uh, she, uh, but one thing is they, that, now this film doesn't know how space works, um, because there's various times in this film where, like, these bombers, these new bombers, like, they're dropping the bombs and they're opening the hatches so that the bombs can come up. But I mean, first off, they don't even have little like thrusters to f just to propel them down because it's you know it's space. If there's nothing like that to help the bombs go and down, uh, they're gonna just float in space and then hope. And then it, when that happens, you just hope that, that this Imperial, huge Imperial Star Destroyer thing, because I don't believe they're Star Destroyers anymore, but whatever, I don't know what they are called now, but this Imperial Star Destroyer will hit it. And, uh, yeah. It acts as if they're in on some planet with air or some sort of atmosphere like air that they're you know able to breathe and all it's gonna it, it, that's how it acts like when they destroy this thing and also they the people on board or the person that does that uh, they're completely fine because they're not sucked down sucked out into space or on the little bridge, they're not sucked and have to be forced to stay there and they're not able to, you know, uh, uh, it, it just doesn't make sense, is the thing. I'm, you know, so if you haven't seen it, it, it doesn't make sense when you're talking about it, and when you watch the movie, it doesn't really make sense there. Um, so, yeah, and this ties into. Uh, Princess Leia, or General Leia, 
Leia Organa, Leia Skywalker, Leia Solo, whatever her name is. Now, um, uh, she's essentially useless in this film. Uh, she gives some orders, but then at some point, you know, Kylo Ren and some TIE fighters are flying to just uh, attack the main ship that, you know, went off into space. And, I mean, Kylo can't even shoot and kill his own mom. But the others I shoot where she is in the whole section, basically, then she gets everyone and she gets sucked down and, you know, they're all, like, dead. Okay. Fine. Well, the thing is, if that happens, like, she, you know, you see she's like, a, like she's like, a, like, kind of, like, it looks like she's kind of crystallized and all. I could guess how one would be. In a situation like that, being out in space because there's no air, no oxygen, but then all of a sudden her hand starts to move, and she opens her eyes and she reaches out her arm and she like, she uses the force to fly or float back to the uh, ship, the command ship, basically. And it's like, it's like what? It doesn't make sense. I mean, even for Star Wars, that, I mean, even in Star Wars, they have used the laws of physics. I mean, Episode 3 does, too. It basically says there's a vac it's a vacuum, because, you know, how, because people float, uh, you know, and General Grievous uh, shot, uh, or threw that staff, electric staff, at the window and it broke and he flew or he got sucked out into space and then had to use like a little hook and wrist uh, little grappling hook to go back and walk on the ship and then Obi-Wan and uh, Anakin were having to hang on because it's It'll suck them out into space and they'll die. He goes with Palpatine, and they have to uh, hit a button so that the uh, this window or uh, window, but this metallic uh, uh, shield or something will come down and stops all the air from getting sucked out, so they don't die and all that. So. That's a, so in Star Wars, it, the laws of physics exist in a galaxy far, far away, but in this film, apparently, it's, I mean, yeah, you'll flow, but you don't die if you have force powers, apparently. Also, you can drop bombs without thrusters, and they'll just fall like, you're, like a, like it would be if you just dropped bombs on a, on the planet with you know, oxygen or something. So, uh, a little bit back to the Laura Dern thing, uh, with, which ties into Leia. I'm going to kind of wrap all this up into a bow. Uh, so, Leia eventually wakes up, and Poe kind of starts this mutiny because he has no, he finds out what her plan is, is like, you know, it's stupid, bitch, which is. Everyone has to get on these transports to get away from the big ship, the big cruiser that they're all on. It's like, in, in doing so, that's going to be dangerous, because then we'll be, we'll all be less vulnerable, because the ship has a shield. The ship they're all on now has a shield. And if they all go there, there's, you know, there's no guns, no shields at all. They're just like, essentially like escape pods. They're not escape pods, but they're kind of like it. There's not a lot of, sh there's no real shielding at all. So, he's explaining how it's stupid and dangerous, and he's right. But, as he and Carrie Fisher's daughter are doing what they can to stall, because, well, this gets into another little plot that I'll talk about. 
they're doing what they can because apparently the forced order is able to track them through hyperspace so they're trying to get rid of that so uh, you know that way uh, they can go to hyperspace without being followed uh, don't know how yeah it just it's well, we do know how. It's explained in the movie, but it's like, dumb. Well, kind of explained. Not very well. Um, but, yeah. Um, but Leia wakes up from her coma that she's been in for basically the whole movie. Because uh, her getting sucked out and being in the coma that happens in the first part of the movie. Uh, so, um, she wakes up and then, uh, there's a, this banging on the door, and he's, Poe is ready to shoot, and stun and all that, but then it's Leia, and then she shoots and stuns Poe, and then they take Poe onto one of those little transports, and everybody that Laura Dern gets on because uh, this is her plan. It's for them to, it's for her to stay there while they escape to a nearby planet, which was an old rebel base that we never saw or heard of before until this film. And they're all going to go there and send a signal so that, you know, because they have help or assistance in other galaxies. So. They'll help us because they know Leia, and Leia, like, inspires people. All right. Um, well, I'm going to take a break from this part uh, with Laura Dern and all, but I'll get back to that because it ties into this next thing. Uh, this uh, Rose, um, this new character, this new Asian character, uh, Rose, she's the sister of the woman who drops the bombs, or has the bombs get dropped and, like, launches it by pushing a button from a, like, a remote control, uh, one of these new bomber ships, they're there for, like, ten seconds or so, uh, she's there to basically be there for Finn, because, well, because Finn wakes up and After a while, and he wonders where Ray is, but he's gonna go. You know, he wants to go in a, like an escape pod, because there are escape pods. These transports are, I guess, similar in escape pods, but they don't have any shielding and or whatever. Because uh, the transports are in like the main, like in a hangar or so. At least from what I recall. Um, but she, but so they meet because she works on the pipes of the ship, the big ship. That's what she does. So she heard stuff about Finn, but then she zaps him because she had us do the similar things to others. Uh, but, you know, uh, Finn, he's like a. He wants to go and find where Ray is, but she, uh, you know, she, because she's off wherever, on the planet where Luke is, and he wants to find her, and basically she's just there because Finn needs somebody to hang around with, um, so there's that. But, you know, but she zaps him, but then he tells how we need to get off because we need to leave because the, the First Order is tracking us through hyperspace. Because he was there when all that was all announced. And she was in the pipes, so apparently she's, everybody but maintenance people, I guess, are, are important. So, you know, that's real nice. Or at least, uh, at least not important enough to ever go to a meeting like that, where 
you know, we're we're in trouble, but oh well, whatever. Uh, you know, the pipe people, genders, they don't really need to be in the know, I guess. Um, but, yeah. Rose isn't that interesting. You know, it gets into this whole subplot later that they have to go find a hacker to hack into the big main ships of Snoke's uh, to, um, you know, hack in and stuff. Uh, uh, disable the tracker uh, at least long enough for them to go into hyperspace and then not be able to find them. So they have to go to this place where there's like a casino and the whole casino thing it's like very reminiscent of a new hope with a cantina though then there's this whole thing with animals and animals abusing like making money off of doing things like that like gambling and getting money by selling arms and ships to the first order and this is where we meet Vinicio del Toro who is a hacker, well not the hacker they needed because well they got they got arrested because they parked on the beach and that was a no parker zone. And some annoying fool uh squealed on them like, ah there they are. It's like oh, shut up. And then Yeah, they they escape after freeing all these animals because there's some animal rights thing here. Apparently that's relevant in Star Wars now. Uh, I mean, hey, if you're for animal rights, or, I mean, I, I'm for animal rights, but to the, I mean, in the, I mean, if you're really, really way into the whole animal rights, uh, I guess you could say PETA-like message. Well, I don't know about PETA, but not being the exact case, but I don't know, who knows, perhaps. There's some of that in there. Uh, but, you know, that whole thing was really weird and completely not Star Wars-like. Star Wars has never had anything like that before. And I'm like, this is really uh, dragging. Okay, we met Benicio Del Toro. We got out. Or you guys got out. Now leave with him. Because then he meets BB-8, because BB-8 accompanied Finn. Despite still being posed right that he had, he had accompanied Finn and Rose to this place because you know, he'll be useful later to uh, do stuff. But, um, so, yeah, that's Rose. Benicio Del Toro's character and BB 8 they steal a ship and then. They get to that first order big ship. They have clothes, yeah. and also the guy that whose ship they stole from. Not only does he uh, sell stuff to the the first order, but they also he also sells like X wings to the resistance too. So they sell stuff to the good and bad guys. So whatever. Uh, and they have this whole thing on the First Order ship. They all get captured. And then... To end up with Laura Dern as they're all going and escaping through the ship thing. Or, or those little transports. Uh, Snoke, who now has Rey, which I'll get into a bit, she... You know, he's showing and telling their stuff and how they're, you know, they get, they're getting, um, how he knew what was going on and how he, because the, the Benicio Del Toro, uh, he, uh, squealed and he, uh, switched teams and was getting paid by the First Order. 
and I guess leaves. Uh, assuming he leaves, we never hear from him again. Uh, well, I don't know, maybe he died because we're, you know, as they're shooting at the uh, resistance uh, transports, Laura Dern then goes and turns the ship towards the, sh the bigger ship and then puts it all through uh, like light speed and then crashes into the ship and like breaks it. Doesn't blow it up completely but yeah that's what Laura Dern was there for. And then Finn and Phasma have a little fight because she's back you know, cause she didn't die and then they their fight uh, ends with him cracking her helmet and she looks at him and then says she's he's a traitorous scum and he says rebel scum meanwhile what the platform she's on has been destroyed pretty much and there's a big hole and then like all around her it's all gone except for this little part she's uh, and after he says that, the rest of it just falls and she goes into the fire or the hole that's there. Uh, so, there you go. Now let's get back, get to what Ray and Luke are doing first off. I want to say how, uh, you know, Porgs, they're annoying. They don't have any use, really. Um... Disney said that, you know, they'd be, they'd be vicious, but honestly, they don't do anything. They just go, <laughs> make noise. So that was annoying. Um, yeah, they're supposed to be, like, vicious. Um, Chewbacca eats one, which was actually kind of humorous and funny. Um, uh, and he just growls and makes noise at them, even though they're getting sad eyes. And, um. And after this, Luke goes on to the Millennium Falcon uh, for the first time in years. And uh, sees R2 is there. And he's talking to him. And that was a very genuine, touching moment, I thought, in the film. So there's, there's some good stuff in here. You know, Mark Hamill's performance is good. Um, uh, Carrie Fisher's performance is good for what she has to do in... Uh, Andy Serkis's character is good, or his acting is good. You know, whatever. Um, get to his character in a bit, um, but yeah, he doesn't. Uh, you know, saw in the trailer. It's time for the Jedi to end. Yeah, he basically says to R2, he does, he's not going to go back, and to try and convince Luke, he plays the message he has from that was in Episode Four of Leia. And he says, that is like a cheap trick. Um, but that's just some big ring that they do. Um, so yeah, throughout the film, you know, Luke, he doesn't want to train really Ray. He doesn't, he has this daily routine, basically. Like, he doesn't want to. And she has Chewbacca break the door of his little hut he's living in. And, uh, he's annoyed and he tells them to go away. They're not going to until he goes with them and to train her. He says, no, he's never going to train the Jedi again. And she has these visions and stuff. And Ray and Kylo Ren are communicating telepathically and are able to see each other. Can't, I guess I might be able to see their surroundings. But, uh. No, they have this interaction. He's like, oh, trying to look for a father figure in Han Solo, then now one for Luke Skywalker. You know, you don't need one, or whatever. Or, uh, you like, you know the truth of your parents, or I do. I saw it in you. Uh, and that she then this goes on for a while, and she doesn't want to listen to him for a while, um, and he, 
and it's revealed how Luke's Jedi Order uh, is destroyed by Kylo Ren. Luke first says he goes to try and confront Ben because he felt he felt darkness within him. Okay, but when he went in, he like he got mad or something. He tried to he like used the Force and everything around him collapsed and fell on him. Because Ben thought he was dead, so he went off and killed all the Jedi there and set the place ablaze and everything fell. Luke got up and sees R2 and what's happened. And later Kylo says to her how he... What happened was Luke went into his room and he, uh... turned his lightsaber on and was about to kill him. And he got his lightsaber to defend himself. And then that's how the place they were in like imploded and fell. Like the force was really strong and doing it. all that. Uh, so then when hearing this, uh, uh, Ray goes to Luke to confront him about if it was true. Well, he says, you know, he felt the darkness in him, and he, like, Snoke seduced him. And we don't know how he did that, we don't know why, well, except for being, you know, Anakin related to Darth Vader. You know, I'm sorry that, there, you know, there's pretension and stuff, but it's like, you know, we should have a better reason than that, like, what about him? I mean, aside from being related to Luke, what about Kylo Ren it makes him so special? Um, I guess that's enough, but it still would have been, I guess, nice to uh, hear more about how at least he found out, I guess I should say, about how he found uh, uh, Ben Solo. And then how he was able to convince him to embrace darkness because he felt Luke felt darkness and then thought he had to kill him. But then at the last moment he hesitated and couldn't do it because then he saw and realized what he was going to do. And that was completely against everything that he was about and the Jedi were about. And then he sees Ben wake up. And he gets his lightsaber because he didn't turn his off. And then, and then that's how all that happened. How the building they're in fell and collapsed and caught a blaze. And then, yeah. So Luke, uh, you know, he basically made Kylo Ren. It goes against the character of Luke that we saw in the original trilogy. We also see some stuff of, of Luke saying, I'm going to train you, you know, I'll give you three lessons after after he is worn down and you know, he doesn't like him. Like, he, I guess they'll just train her and how she like him. Kind of saw the darkness and then she kind of went towards him and didn't hesitate or try to stop going to it. And, uh, yeah. Uh, and then after... But before hearing Luke's... A second part of Luke's story, she goes and confronts him and then starts hitting him, trying to hit him with a, like a staff. Well, he dodges it, he gets his own staff and they fight, and then he knocks her staff out, and then she gets his lightsaber, and uh, you know, just points at him, and then he tells her all that, what really happened. Um, but, yeah, and then uh, Snoke, um, because the way they're telepathically speaking, Kylo and Rey, uh, that's all of him. Because after she finds out 
from the loop with the whole story of Kylo Ren and how you basically made a judgment based on something that didn't that wasn't even a future that would ever happen and how you know because Luke's saying there's a hypocrisy with the Jedi and all this it's like it's because of the ideals of the Jedi of old it's why Darth Vader was allowed to become because of all this stuff was in place it's just hypocrisy and Sith is no better than them and then Ray points out how he redeemed Darth Vader and then Darth Vader destroyed like the Sith but I guess that doesn't matter to Luke now for reasons But yeah, that's just some stuff I have more of problems with. Um, so, before all that, uh, they were communicating and it got to the point where they were able to touch and see each other and they're like in the same vicinity. And what caused the whole fight of that and of her finding out and all that. And, She and Kylo touch hands. And then Luke comes into where she's staying and says stop, and then he goes away. And then, so she goes to the Falcon um, with Chewbacca. They head towards where uh, no. uh, the resistance is at. Except for because there's this homing beacon thing that Leia gave uh, <clears throat> Ray to find her way home, basically. After she's done with Luke. Uh, or found Luke and brings him back, they're able to find where they are. So, she does that. Yes. Do that and, uh... She gets in, like, this little escape pod thing and... She goes to Kylo Ren, and they go before Snoke, and she's a prisoner. And, uh, Snoke really was a waste, because we don't know anything about him. Really, we don't know, as I said, we don't know why he seduced, or how he seduced Kylo Ren. I guess we know the why, you know. Darth Vader's grandson, Luke Skywalker's nephew. Um, you know, Jedi's and stuff. But how, we don't know, because he's using the Force against Rey, and earlier we saw him use lightning on Kylo Ren, and then he like, freezes her in the air, and then uses the Force from the lights, because she tries to get the lights in his back, but then it flies around, and she hits her in the back of the head, which was actually kind of somewhat comical. Just the way it happens. Like, Come on, lady. You're, you're strong with a force. Don't know why or how. Because you know, you're nobody. Um, but you're strong with a force. You didn't sense or ex even expect that. Um, and then he has her go to the ground and she tries to get or she gets Kylo Ren's lightsaber, but then, yeah, he's shocked. Snoke electrocutes her. She drops it, and Kylo Ren picks it up, and she's on the ground. And he's saying how he's, when he saw, you know, what, because he saw in Kylo Ren, he wasn't, he was conflicted about the dark side and the light. And he's very conflicted. Now, where there was confliction, there's just resolve. So then he says he will now go and kill her to fulfill his destiny and become one with the dark side. But then, you know, you see Kylo doing this with his fingers behind his back and then he like, uses the force and turns on the... because uh, he spins the lightsaber, which is right next to him. And it spins it towards him and then he turns it on and it just goes through him and then he, he, does, he uses the force to bring it close to where Rey is, and then cuts him in half, and she grabs it, and then 
there's all these like guards there and Ray and Kylo kill all of them. Snoke falls down in half. So, yeah, they're fighting. And then Lord Ern hits the ship. It breaks his silver and is like on fire now and stuff. And broken. And, um, yeah. Then. He's trying to, Kylo Ren's trying to convince her to come to the dark side and all that, but she won't. Uh, but they were working together and she let him use her Luke's lightsaber, and he did, but he hasn't. She tries to get it back from him, but then he uses the Force to try and get it back, but it stays in the middle, right between them, and then it just breaks and, I guess, the explosion there combined with. Explosion of uh, what Laura Dern caused uh, knocks him out, uh, but apparently not Ray, and she takes the remaining lights of her pieces. So, you know, Yoda also returns. Um, Yoda returns because, you know, after Ray leaves, he's still up to set depressed he basically come came to the planet he's at to die that's like the only reason he's there uh, and um, you know, that's really it but it's that's a stupid and dumb statement and also he cut himself off from the force so nobody could sense him and he didn't sense Han's death that's the explanation for him never showing up, ever having any reaction or whatever. That's just like what? That's kind of dumb. But yeah, Yoda returns because he's gonna destroy the old Jedi Temple because with all these books and stuff, ancient texts. And then he has like he's gonna convert it down. Excuse him. And then like Yoda looks up in the sky and. He, so he's a ghost, but then he causes like this lightning, one storm of light, just to come and strike lightning and blows up and burns the place down, sending Luke flying back, and he just laughs and then basically tells them how he needs to you know, not let Ray succumb to the dark side and all this and that, and how she. to be like taught basically and then you go to the salt planet and forced order goes down and the resistance has a old or sends a signal to everybody that's uh, like an ally and they're cut off in this hangar thing and they sh send these like ships to go and take out this big, like, laser that the First Order has. And, uh, there's no reinforcements that comes. Well, I guess that's later, but, you know, they're flying, and, and Finn wants to sacrifice himself because he doesn't want the First Order to keep winning. Which actually could have been a pretty cool and uh, maybe, like, emotional moment. Yeah, he was kind of like a coward throughout this trilogy, but he's going to do something noble. He's going to sacrifice himself to save the friends he's got. And uh, But before he can, Rose comes in on another, one of these little ship speeder things and crashes into him to save him. And then I know, I know they've been in the whole film basically together, but then she says stuff about how... Oh, uh, you know, and doing things in war and stuff like this isn't about. It's really about saving the ones you love. And then she kisses him and, like, is unconscious. Because I don't believe she's dead. Because later on the Falcon, everyone's leaving. Uh, spoiler alert again. But 
uh, he puts a blanket on him. It's like, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. So this blazer blows up this hole in the place and find out, oh, no one's coming. But then all of a sudden you see Luke come. So it's like, well, oh, he's here. He's finally here. And then, but the thing is, it's like a flashback where he has like a brown beard and brown hair. You know, so it's like, something's up. But okay, well, whatever. You know, he's walking through and he sees Leia. Gives her some stuff. But he took on the Falcon. He's talking to her. A little bit and how sees C three PO and then he goes out uh, the doorway and Kylo Ren sees him and from the, like, the ship because now he's taken control of everything now and uh, he tells all like these walkers to open fire on him. But he's completely fine, he's not dead, and he just like, brushes it all off, like, and then that was nothing. So Kyle Ren goes down and goes and says stuff like, you appear to try and say you, you're sorry, you're not, no. Are you forgetting me? Like, no, I'm not. And then Luke takes out his lightsaber after Kylo did, and his is blue. Which I thought that's kind of interesting. He's using his blue one now, not the green one. Um, and um, I think there's this bit cool du duel about to happen. Um, and Luke and Kylo. Kylo comes and swings at him, but he keeps dod. He like bends backwards and dodges all what he does. And this whole time, you know, Poe was looking like, oh, we, we need, you know, Skywalker's doing this for a reason. Finn's like, oh, we need to go and help him. You know, you can't just let one man go out there and alone because we die. Because you know, Finn also dragged uh, Rose back in to the place. And, uh, like, well, how'd he get in? And also, where are all these, there's like these little ice dogs things that are on the planet. And, uh, there has to be a way out, like, 3 PO says, like, oh, there's no real, I don't sense any, like, way out that's known, but it has to be in an old one, old place, so they go and follow the dogs, because Luke's being a distraction for everyone to leave, but then, you know, as Luke's there, he, uh, kind of, he's saying how he's failed him, and that he's sorry, he says, I'm sure you are. And all this, like, unless I kill you, all this, you know, basically, uh, the resistance is done. And she says, no. I will not be the last Jedi, and the war has just begun. So, then, Kylo runs and, you know, slices Luke. And there's, like, this red stuff. Like, the ground's really red, but when you walk, like, when you walk. So, it's, like, it's the white salt. He's like covering all this, so he slides, and then you see Luke. He's still standing. And he looks at him. Like, what the? He stabs through, and it's like a hologram, which is pretty interesting and neat. And then you see Luke on the planet he's already on, and he's using the Force. Like he's one with the Force again, and he's doing all this. Then he goes, "See you around, kid," and he just goes away. And before that, he says, you strike me down in anger, I will I'll still be with you, just like your father is, which is what prompted Kylo to try to uh, kill him. But then Kylo realizes what's happened, and then have him go and try and find them. But uh, the resistance follows these dogs, and uh, yeah. But there's all these, like, rocks in the way, but they're able to get through. And then 
Ray stops not far from where they are and uses the force to uh, move the rocks. And then everybody gets on the Falcon and one last time as Kylo and all of them are in the base, he looks at and sees Ray as she closes the door to the To the uh, Falcon, and then they take off. So, yeah. And then after all that, Luke then falls over because he was exhausted, and then he looks up at the sun, like kind of coming full circle, because you know the twin suns in the episode four. It was kind of like the beginning of his journey. Well, now he looks out at the sun and similar reminiscent music of like that kind of plays. And then he is, is there and then he disappears and becomes one with the force and he died. Very anticlimactic, I might add, because it's like, really? That's how he dies? Not in some meaningful epic duel he'd have with his nephew after what he was going to do then decided it was wrong because you know, it was but then for the misunderstanding to happen like I was going to but I it changed my mind you know it's just so they ruin Luke's character the hero of the original trilogy the person we all saw grow for three films is the, the character's ruined. It's disrespectful to not just fans of the original trilogy or to Luke. You know, it's really a slap in the face of the character, as well as George Lucas, you know, who said this film was a you know, it was a it was a like a wonderfully well made film. And it is. It's one of the tech. It's like technically one of the best shot films in the series. It's beautifully made, as he said. Yeah, he, he said that, and it is true. It looks good. Though he doesn't. Ex it doesn't seem like. It doesn't seem to ever explain more from what I've read. It's just that quote. So maybe that's all he said. Yeah, he said it was a beautifully made film. And Mark Hamill for months had been saying stuff like he disagreed completely with what they did to his character. And I agree with him. His character, in my opinion, was the best. He, Luke Skywalker is my favorite character in Star Wars. And to see my favorite character end up like this, hearing the story that you probably should have heard in Episode 7, but different as well. Of the, what happened to the Jedi Temple, he should have been involved in the film, actually. And then this, to see all this, it really cemented this character kind of really, like, kind of being like a, a loser. He, uh, he kind of already was like that in The Force Awakens, but now, to hear, see everything, it's like, wow. It's very unfortunate that This happened to Luke and to Mark Hamill. He didn't seem happy. Um, it's just very uh, sad to see my favorite character go go out like that. Um, and I'm sure he'll be in Episode Nine, be a Force Ghost. Like Obi Wan was in the original trilogy, the last two films, as well as Yoda in Episode Six. Uh, I mean, the last films for Obi Wan, I mean, like you know, the original trilogy. Um, but yeah, uh, this movie kind of made me like, you know, you're not just rebooting stuff. Because there are major elements that are rebooted, but even the original stuff, it's boring. It's two and a half hours, it's too long. You know, because there are moments that kind of drag. 
That should not have been there, like the casino stuff. With the animals. That plot wasn't really needed. Could have just followed Benicio del Toro and got in the ship, and there you go. But, uh, this movie kind of makes me not want, want to continue seeing the next Star Wars movies. Uh, you know, it's like Han Solo, uh, Solo a Star Wars story. It's like, why would I want to watch a film about uh, Han Solo, like his origin story, essentially? Do I care how he got the Falcon? You know, we already know he lost it in a bet with Lando. There's a mystery to him. And while, <clears throat> and while Han's not my favorite character, I still like Han. The mystery of him really, of where he came from, and how he became a small dwarf, um, is not explained in the original trilogy and doesn't need to be explained. <clears throat> and from this, I don't know where. I mean, I guess aside from you know, rebooting Return of the Jedi heavily, because also part of the Return of the Jedi that was in here, and Last Jedi was the Snoke scene with Rey and Kylo, and he even shows on a monitor uh, what's going on with the Resistance fleet and they're all being destroyed. Because he also knew of the treachery that was going to happen, so he just had them, like, open fire. Or they are opening fire, because Phasma, well, he knew that it was going to happen, so... Yeah. That was a return of the Jedi little moment there. But, you know, I... I really wanted to like this trilogy. Though, because Mark, or not Mark Hamill, uh, because George Lucas was not involved in this trilogy at all, or any of these films, not as a consultant, not as the creator of the story, you know, he wrote stories, but they threw them out. No, Mark Hamill himself wished they kept his stories and had him involved, like they were originally going to do, but they didn't. And I agree with him, I wish uh, he was. But, yeah, that's my thoughts and detailed plot. I, it was more detailed than I really intended, but you know, I had a feeling this would go over an hour, and it did. But if you've watched this and you like this movie, you know, that's fine. Do not let what I said to you dictate whatever you know dictate your views or changes of it if you do change your mind from liking this movie to not it should be because uh, it just happened over time you know you just gradually didn't like this as time went on um, cause, you know, you know, it's whatever if you like the movie you like it I just stated why I'm not fond of this film, just as I did when I said why I didn't really like The Force Awakens, um, even though I was initially happy with it, but that was really, again, because I kind of wanted to be wrong, I wanted to be proven wrong, that Disney could own it, and weren't just caring about money and stuff, but they were its originality is gone. It's gone from Star Wars. At least the episode-wise, it seems to be gone. Um, this new trilogy of films, I have no idea what that's going to be like. Whether well, it will be 10 through 12 or something different. Um, but, yeah. <sighs> I could go on, but I think I've said enough so yeah that's all see you next time bye